Okay, <clears throat> CCA uh, depreciation is the actual depreciation that has to be used when reporting income to the government and the CCA depreciation has a spe in Canada has specific features that you need to remember for this exam, for, the, for this course. So the main building blocks are the three most uh, important points. Uh, the, the, the three most uh, important aspects of CCA depreciation are these ones. When you buy an asset, you have to determine which, to which asset class this asset belongs. Okay. In the first year, when you buy an asset, uh, you can only depreciate one half of the purchasing price of these assets. Why? Because these assets could be could have been purchased at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. So the, the, the revenue agency only allows firms to deduct one half of uh, the, um, the value of the assets on the year they are being purchased uh, for uh, depreciation purposes. Uh, and if at the end of the project, okay, uh, the assets are sold, uh, further adjustments must be made to the present value of the CCA. Uh, in some cases, assets could be sold at a profit if it's a piece of land. Okay, land could be sold at a higher price than the purchasing price. In which case, there are also tax consequences. So you, you buy an asset. So you, you need to determine uh, to which asset class uh, the asset belongs. So furniture, appliance, tools, machinery, uh, asset class number eight, depreciation rate 20%. Computer, hardware, software acquired before 2005, uh, depreciation rate 30%. Computer software purchased after uh, depreciation rate 100%. So you, they depreciate once, uh, I guess twice because on the first year you just depreciate one half. So one half on year one, one half on year two. Machinery and equipment for manufacturing and processing 30%. An example, so a firm purchase assets uh, worth uh, $7,500, okay, it could be $7.5 million, it makes no difference, so $7,500, these assets belong to a CCA, CCA class for which the depreciation rate uh, to be applied is 45%. Each year, the depreciation rate is applied to what is referred to as the undepreciated capital cost. In the first year, only one half of the capital expense can be depreciated. Okay, so year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, CapEx, 7,500 at time 0. Asset class with a CCA rate of 45%, 45%, 45%, 45%. So, 70, 70, $7,500 in CapEx at time zero. In the first year, only one half of the capital expenditures can be depreciated. So, the undepreciated capital cost in year one is equal to one half of 7500 so $3,750 is equal to one half of $7,500. We apply the CCA rate of 45% to the UCC of year one, and this gives us the CCA, the depreciation that can be applied to sales in year one. Okay, uh, before calculating uh, the tax expense. So 3,750 times 45% is equal to $1,688. On the second year, what is UCC? Uh, so UCC is, so we started with, in year one, with one half of 7,500. So 3,750 
we subtracted, we already used $1,688 in uh, depreciation. So this goes at the top of year two, plus we add back the second half of the value of the assets purchased at time zero. So undepreciated capital cost at time two is $5,813. We apply the 45% rate to the UCC at time two, which gives a CCA, a depreciation expense of $2,616 for year two. What's the UCC? What is the UCC at the beginning of year three? So we had a UCC of 5,813 at the beginning of year two, we used $2,616. So we are left with 5,813 minus 2,616, $3,197. We apply the 45% rate to $3,197 and that gives us a depreciation expense of $1,439 and so on. Okay, so we subtract uh, the, the, the CCA at time three from UCC at, at the beginning of time three, and that gives us UCC at the beginning of time four. We do the same. So here, this should be CCA four, not CCA three. So that gives us a CCA for the fourth year of $791 and so on. So note that we could have separated the CCA depreciation in two tranches, one beginning in year one and one beginning in year two, because one half of the capex starts depreciating in year one and the second half of the capex starts de depreciating in year two. So both tranches are identical, except for their, ti their timing. So UCC tranche one, zero, one half of the purchase, and then uh, the depreciated value of the UCC, the non-depreciated value of the first half of the capital expenditures. And then we have the same number for tranche two. So, but instead of having 3750 at time one, we have it at time two, 2063 at time two here, at time three here, 1134 at time three here, at time four uh, here, and so on. Same thing with the CCA depreciation. So 1688 at time one for tranche one, 1688 at time two for tranche two, and so on. 928, 928, 510, 510, 281, 281, and so on. So the CCA total that we have calculated earlier is simply the CCA, the sum of the CCA of tranche one and tranche two. Now what is? Can we compute easily the present value of all these CCA depreciation? So these uh, two sequences seem to be uh, perpetuities. Okay, let's see. So the first value of each perpetuity is <clears throat> 3750 times 45%, 1688. The second value of each perpetuity is 928. So what is 928? 928 is 2063 times 45%. 2063 times 45%, that's 3750 minus 1688 times 45%, which is in fact 1 minus 45% times 3,750. So that's 1 minus 45% times the first CCA uh, depreciation expense. We keep going. The third value on this sequence is 510, which is 1,134 times 45%, which is equal to 1 minus 45% times 2,063, which is equal to 1 minus 45% uh, to the power 2 
times 3,750 times 45 percent, which is 1 minus 45 uh, percent to the power 2 times the first CCA depreciation expense. And so on, the third value, 281, is equal to 1 minus 45 percent to the power 3 times times uh, 1,688 times the first payment. So the present value of the first tranche of the CCA depreciation is then equal to a growing perpetuity. So it's a growing perpetuity for which the first payment is 1,688 and the growth rate is minus 45%. So we know how to compute the present value of a growing perpetuity. It's the, the first payment divided by the discount rate plus the depreciation rate, minus the depreciation rate. So here the depreciation rate is negative, minus, minus, plus. And the present value of the second tranche, it's the same as the first one, but it begins one period later. So it has to be discounted over one more period. So the present value of the second tranche is equal to the, the present value of the first tranche divided by one plus the discount rate. So the present value of the CCA depreciation when we divide it in two tranche, tranches, in two sections, it's present value of the first tranche plus um, present value of the second section. So we can simplify the equation and this is what we obtain. If we want to express it in terms of the capital expense, uh, $7,500, well, we, we need to open, <clears throat> we need to open uh, 1,688 into one half of uh, $7,500 times 45%. And this is what we obtain for the formula of the sum of the first two sections of CCA depreciation. So here, if we assume the assets will never be sold, this is what the present value of the CCA depreciation looks like. So CapEx times depreciation rate times one plus one half the discount rate divided by, by 1 plus the discount rate, multiplied by the discount rate plus the depreciation rate. <clears throat> so, so here what we can do when we compute a free cash flow, so we know that earnings before interest and taxes is equal to earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization minus depreciation, which in this case uh, here is CCA. So we can extract uh, the CCA depreciation from the free cash flow calculation. So instead of applying the tax rate to EBIT, we apply the tax rate to EBITDA. Plus, we add as a positive cash flow the tax savings that the CCA depreciation allow, allows us to collect okay, by reducing EBIT. <clears throat> so the present value of all the depreciation is, is given by this equation here, but what is, what interests, what is um, uh, important for the firm in terms of cash flow is the present value of the CCA tax shield which is the present value of CCA multiplied by the tax rate. So this is the tax, these, uh, this is the present value of all the tax savings we will realize, the firm will realize by spending CapEx uh, in an asset for which the CCA class imposes a depreciation rate D uh, when the discount rate for the firm is R. Now, in the next video, we will see how to adjust the present value of the CCA tax shield when the assets are sold at a later date.